Hi, I'm Leon, the founder of Audio Advice. This video is all about the new Sonos Fiber Omnia, an all-in-one system designed to introduce people to the beauty and sound quality of Sonos Fiber speakers. Sonos Fiber is an Italian company that makes some of the world's best sounding speakers, reaching up to $250,000 a pair. There's no question their gorgeous physical appearance is second to none. Their ability to deliver a high-performance speaker that complements the design of a residential environment is what has made them famous. If you've ever seen a pair in person, you know exactly what I mean. When Sonus Fiber told us about the Omnia, I hoped they had taken what they learned from their totally outrageous SF-16 they released in 2017 and found a way to bring their Italian design and great tech into something much more reasonably priced. If you ever saw the SF-16, it was made of a curved block of 3D molded multiply wood enclosure with a motorized set of speaker wings. The remote was even carved from a solid block of aluminum. It was an amazing piece of gear that also had a price tag to match. I'm happy to say the Omnia is an incredible all-in-one system that for its beautiful design and sound is very fairly priced. Coming from their 40-year history of building some of the most beautiful speakers in the world, I was not surprised to see the Omni as just gorgeous. Our sample had the walnut top, but there is also a graphite option coming later in 2022. As you can see, it is curvy, just like an Italian sports car. As a matter of fact, the side grills of the Crescendo speakers remind me of the grill on a fancy sports car. Everything about the fit and finish is just first class and it is one heck of a cool and unique shape. Even the supplied remote control with the Omnia has a curvy appearance that matches the Italian lines of the unit. Sonos Faber has what they call their Senso system on the top of the unit. It is a tactile, touch-sensitive surface with thin bars of light that serve several purposes. First, they just add a neat look, although if you want, they can be turned off, but they also indicate the current source selection and volume level. You can also pause the music and raise or lower the volume using the lights on top. The way they are laid out is you have three long cylinder light bars. The bottom one will change its look as you adjust the volume, but once you're done, return to fully lit. Then there's a smaller bar with two lighted dots on either side. The smaller bar is where you can play pause and it changes color based upon the source selection. The two outer dots are how you raise and lower the volume. And I discovered another use I'll go over later. I think the Omnia has about the best connectivity package I've seen on an all-in-one speaker like this. The first thing that sets it apart is the moving magnet phono input. There's a separate small dongle you can connect to a turntable up to, or if your turntable has a built-in phono preamp, you can change the input to be a line level with a small switch next to the dongle connector. This could also be used for something like a CD player as well. I'm seeing more units like the Omnia come out with HDMI ARC these days, which is especially great with the shape of the Omnia. HDMI ARC, if you don't know about it, allows your TV to send an audio signal down to the unit, but another benefit is your TV remote control then takes over the volume for the Omnia when the TV is the source. All units like this also automatically turn on and select the right input when you turn on the TV. As a tip for Omnia buyers, since the Omnia is a two-channel unit, you'll want to set your TV to output PCM, not surround sound. Since the Omnia is only about five inches tall, it will look great under most TVs as a music player that can also double as your soundbar. You'll have no trouble streaming your favorite music service to the Omnia as it supports AirPlay 2, Chromecast, and Bluetooth, and Bluetooth is Adaptex HD for the best performance. Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect are also on board, and it even has Rune. And for those of you who love to tell your smart speaker what to play, it supports both Siri and Google Assistant. All of these inputs will be auto-selected except for phono input, and I was a little worried about the fact that the only way to change it was by the handheld remote and what might happen if you lost it. I discovered you can do a two-finger swipe on the Senso volume control and it will change inputs. Pretty neat. With Sonus Faber's speaker heritage, I expected the Omni to have a great speaker design, and it certainly does, with seven discrete drivers and discrete amps for each one. The sealed cabinet houses a six and a half inch down firing aluminum cone woofer, which launches the bass wave into a curved part of the cabinet designed to improve how the bass fills your room. In addition, on each side of the 26 inch long cabinet, there's a three quarter inch silt dome tweeter with a neodymium motor system and a three inch paper pulp comb mid-range driver. 
There are two more drivers on each side behind the cool looking grills that are part of the crescendo system developed by Sonos Fiber. These are one and three quarter inch wide range inverted dome cellulose pulp membrane drivers with a neodymium motor system. That's a mouthful. Sonos Fiber uses some special DSP with these that adds a bigger and better sense of space. When you enter the IP address of your Omnia into your web browser, you get access to even more features. This is where you can turn Crescendo on or off. You can also select if your Omnia is near a wall or not. As you will see in my testing, I really like the fact they give you the option of activating their Crescendo system or defeating it. Also on the interface is something they call Loudness Maximizer, which is similar to a loudness button on a vintage piece of audio gear. Like all smart speakers, the Omnia needs to be set up to work with your network. Sonos Fiber made this really easy. Apple users can use the Apple Home app and add it as an accessory, and Android users can add it using Google Home. I tried both ways on my iPhone 13 and do have a tip here. The Apple method is easier since you don't have to enter any network credentials and it's super fast. The Google Home app will show the Omni at the top of the screen with a small setup button. This takes about two minutes compared to the 30 seconds for the Apple method, but does have one pretty big advantage. The Google Home app will show you the IP address of the Omnia when you get to the end, which will let you easily get to the advanced settings. If you use the Apple way, you'll need to scan your network to find it. I found you can set it up using both methods so it will work with either voice assistant. The advanced setting page where you enter the IP address is something you'll only really need to access once unless you want to really get into changing the crescendo setting based on the type of music playing. I've seen some high-end smart speakers be a little glitchy at playing some streaming sources, so I actually tested every single type of streaming source connection and it worked flawlessly every time. I found the room placement setting to work just great. It's probably the best I've experienced so far. I used three very different types of placements to check it out. My first test was in a very large open room with the Omni about three feet away from any wall. There the bass was much better with the unit set up to be away from the wall. I then tried a much smaller room with it about two feet from the back wall and about one foot from a side wall and preferred the bass with it in the near wall position. Finally, I tried it in a medium sized room about 12 inches off the back wall. In this setup, it was very obvious the bass was far tighter and well designed with it set to near a wall. Kudos to Sonus Faber for the way they set up the EQ for these two settings. You change these using the web browser and I suspect most people will never change this once they've done a little listing to find out the best setting for their room. Crescendo was a mixed bag for me and it could be because of my biased audiophile ears. On all but some pretty funky electronic music, I preferred it turned off. With it on, the sound is clearly bigger and more room filling, but it changed the tonal quality of the mid-range and it sounded a little phasey to my ears. Performers' voices and instruments just sounded more natural and real to me with it defeated. I suspect this is due to the fact you're adding in the smaller side drivers, which have a different sonic character than the main mid-range drivers. If you're a way off axis or move around your room a lot, you might like it on, as when you get to about 160 to 100 gray degrees off axis, the mid-range does seem clear with it on, but for most listing positions, I think you'll just want to defeat it. I did not have time to test Crescendo using the Omni as a soundbar, and in that situation, it might be the preferred way. My one criticism is, while it's just a click to go to the app to turn Crescendo on or off, it would have been nice to have a button on either the remote or the unit that served this purpose. Heck, if they even let you assign it to an input, that would have been better. The loudness optimizer circuit works really well, and I like the way Sonus Fiber implemented it. In the early days of audio, most gear had a loudness button that boosted the deep bass. The idea was, our ears do not sense bass as well at low volume levels, and the loudness circuit makes the bass richer at lower levels. The catch is, when you crank things up, you really don't want it on, as then the bass becomes overpowering and booming. With the Omnia, if you turn it on, you get 3 dB of bass boost until you get to 25% of the volume setting. Then it gradually reduces until you get to 50% where it switches totally off. That's just a great way to do it as you get that nice added richness when it's turned down really low, but no extra boost as you play it louder. And the 50% level on that Omni is not that loud either. I felt this worked just great. I tried a variety of my favorite test tracks, mostly streaming them to the Omnia using Rune. The Omnia came across to me as very pleasant to listen to, but with outstanding dynamics and bass, plus nothing is muddled together like many smart speakers. I had it playing for several hours at different volume levels and never felt the urge to turn it down due to any harshness. 
The overall sound of the Omni is quite special. Sonos Fiber speakers are known for being very natural with a relaxed and easy to listen to presentation and the Omnia follows that great heritage. It is some of the best and most tuneful bass I've ever heard from a smart speaker. The only other one that even comes close is the name Muso 2. The Omnia specs claim it's only 6 dB down at 30 Hz and I believe it. I'm talking about the ability to hear the pluck and harmonics of a bass guitar string or the strife of a kick drum. It's just that good. It's also very tuneful with a great sense of rhythm and pacing as it really had my toes tapping on a few involving cuts. And speaking of turning things up or down, if you want to crank things up, it will do it with a ton of gusto. The Sonos Fiber Specs claim it can produce levels of 108 dB, which is incredibly loud. I was able to turn it up to uncomfortably loud levels with no sense of breakup, although I never recommend you listen at that level if you want to keep your ears in good shape. On a very good stereo system with great electronics and speakers, you can hear into the tiny volume changes that let you sense the expression in the performer's voice the way they're playing the instrument. I didn't expect to hear those kinds of details from a speaker like this, but the more tracks I played, I started hearing some of those same characteristics. It truly lets you hear deep into the music. Obviously, the one thing missing from any speaker like this is the ability to paint a three-dimensional soundstage right in front of you. That takes a pair of stereo speakers and a set of electronics. But from a tonal and dynamics perspective, the Omnia is very, very good. The smart speaker category encompasses a pretty wide range of prices. It's up to the buyer to decide the right budget that fits their needs. If you're in the market for a better and more involving sound, but do not want to get into a system made up of separate components and can afford the Omnia, I feel like you cannot go wrong with it. The sound it creates is just awesome. I have to say it's the best sounding smart speaker like this I've heard to date. And the fact that it's almost like having a work of Italian sculpture sitting in your room is an extra bonus. All right, that concludes our review of the Sonus Farmer Omnia. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and also check out the playlist section of our YouTube channel to easily find all the content you're looking for. If you have any questions, give us a call, chat with one of our experts at audioadvice.com or just stop into one of our award-winning showrooms. We'll be happy to help you out. We'll see you next time.